how do you think artificial intelligence as a whole is developing and affecting the world today? Do you, do you remember the first time the Japanese came up with a bot, right? And the whole world, I can't remember the name of the Sony, I think, came up with a bot and it was just for demo, right? Yeah. It would just move, move something from somewhere to somewhere. Yeah. Um, and then, and then, uh, and then they have these uh, artificial, you know, you have these artificial, artificial intelligence uh, demos that are being done online, right? So for yeah. makeup or lipstick, you don't need real people anymore, right? You can have an avatar and then you don't need to worry about getting the lighting right and getting the camera angle light. We just have avatars and, and they do it that way. I, I, I think artificial in, intelligence, there are a few things, right? So the first phase was programming logic. Yeah. So you would program the logic and, and it would run through all the permutations and give you the answer. Yeah. And when IBM created Big Blue and it beat uh, the ch it won at chess, that was it, right? So it was a program. They had forty engineers sitting around there. They'd run through every permutation. Then you started to find that there were people building algorithms that were learning structured data. So yeah. it was still an algorithm. You were still feeding it structured data, and it was learning, right? Yeah. Now you have algorithms that are learning unstructured data. So you just chuck, keep chucking data and it's learning. Yeah. And Peter, Peter Thiel invested in a company called DeepMind, yeah. which was subsequently acquired by Google, right? Yeah. And Peter Thiel invested in a company called DeepMind. And DeepMind produced a software, software called um, AlphaGo. Yeah. And AlphaGo plays this, uh, it's, plays Go, right? So Alpha, AlphaGo plays Go. And I remember, I think, I can't remember when it was, but six, seven years ago, it, it beat the world champion, the Korean uh, Lee Sedol, five games. It beat Sedol 4-1. Oh, okay. And after the game, Sedol said, I think I have met the god of Go. Because he was just blown away, right? Yeah. Because it made a move that was so human, so unpredictable, it caught it all completely by surprise. Yeah, yeah. And he didn't know how to react, right? So Go has several more hundred permutations compared to chess because the, the pieces, you know, so it's but you can't program it, right? It has to learn itself. Yeah. And the guys who built it, they started building a video game, which then evolved into this machine to play uh, to play Go. Yeah. And after they beat Sedol, I think they closed down the project. But Peter Thiel said that he is actually frightened by the pace at which AI is developing. Mm. And it's, he says that people who are not in this area just don't understand how fast this is going. And, you know, we talk about singularity where machine and, and, and man can think the same. Yeah. yeah. Singularity may come. Yeah. I mean, I may not see it. Um, you guys might see it. Mm -hmm. And, and there's, a, there's an Israeli uh, uh, author called um, Yuval, Hari, uh, Yuval Noah Hariri, who wrote yeah. a series of books. And one of the books, one of the more recent books he wrote was Homo Deus. And in Homo Deus, you can be part machine and part human. Yeah. Wow. And he raised the issue, which I thought was quite fascinating. He said, right now, we have this um, moral restraint, mm -hmm. which says that if you lose a hand, I should be able to medically give you back the hand, but the hand should be no more powerful than the old hand. And so if you lose an eye, I should give you back an eye, but it shouldn't be more powerful than the old eye, right? But this is a moral line that people are saying, right? Mm -hmm. He says, once science and medicine pushes its boundaries, why won't you opt to change your eye? Why won't you opt to change your hand? Why won't you opt to change your ear? Yeah. Because you can get such a better one, right? And so there's a, there comes a point where there's this moral issue that needs to be discussed by technologists. Yeah. And he talked about, you know, uh, Yuval Harari talked about, you need to program the car that if it's faced with a pregnant woman, 
a child and an old man and killing the driver, who does it kill? Because once you set, you, you have to set it because it cannot make a decision, right? You need, you need to be able to tell the machine. Yeah. And the moment you tell it, that outcome will happen because you programmed it. Yeah. yeah. And so there are fascinating questions that will be left for your children to answer. Yeah. And um, I wish your children's children luck in answering the question. <laughs> well, even like changing an arm and stuff, there's even you can change the genetics of a baby before it's born. I know there's a lot of laws against it, but science, it's kind of unpredictable. Yeah, I mean, there's actually... the case of the, the South African runner, right? Beatrice, uh, who applied to run in the Olympics. Yeah. And the Olympic Committee had to think about, does his prosthetic leg give him an advantage over a human leg? Yeah. Valid question, right? And today you get these exo exoskeletons and you see them in the warehouses, right? They, you put them on and it gives you a little bit more extra power to lift something. Mm. You know, Iron Man might just happen, right? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I mean, might be multiple Iron Man, not just one then. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, in fact, and that's what that's what Peter Thiel actually talked about once. And I was listening to his interview, and he said that there could come a time where machines go habit with us. Yeah. And the machines are going down a track, and there's a human, and the machine says, you know. It's not worth expending the energy to move aside for Ali, so I'll just run over him. Mm. I mean, they, these are fascinating conversations, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. So overall, do you think all this artificial intelligence is there to benefit us or replace us? Nobody has the answer to that. You know, it's the old age question of, you know, where it was dynamite created for good or for bad was a it was yeah. a, was the knife created for good or bad there yeah. there is there is much good in it and there is also much bad in it mm. yeah you can't the thing is you can't stop technology because you can't unilaterally agree that everybody is not going to use it somebody will leak and somebody will use it yeah and then when that person uses it then that person has an advantage or that company has an advantage and then of course you can't stop it right yeah, yeah. 